Hi, this is Marie and I wanted to do a different kind of video today. I wanted to show you just a couple of the ways that I've been using two kinds of technology together to do remote learning. So I'm personally been using Zoom and Bitpaper. Now both of my accounts cost money um, and I'm lucky enough to be able to afford both of them at this time and use them for my ed therapy practice. But um, I think that all of this information can be applied to two different kinds of things together. An interactive whiteboard, that's what Bitpaper is, and a sort of video conferencing um, website. So if you have video conferencing, I'm going to highly encourage you to add an interactive whiteboard, and that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. So I have spent oof, the last couple of years working as an educational therapist, I think since 2012. Um, so I have been not a classroom teacher for that long. I've been doing one-on-one -on -one support for students, but I was a classroom teacher before that uh, for several years. I'm dating myself here. And, dur and what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I address both how I would use Bitpaper and an, uh, the interactive whiteboard and video conferencing software together if I was a classroom teacher, and then also how I've been using it since remote learning started with my ed therapy students. So first of all, I wanna say, this is not my preferred way to teach. I would rather be in person with students. I think that so much is lost when we can't be next to each other, sharing a piece of paper, looking at them and seeing kind of those micro expressions, I think, all of that's lost, and I would prefer to be able to be around students. But as things have changed in our world with COVID and just health reasons, I am willing to embrace digital learning for at least the time being, because I do want to keep my students up to date. So the first thing I want to show you is how I use Bitpaper to front load um, front load all of my lessons. So let's start by going here. You can see there's like all this stuff behind me. So uh, let's start by going to, this is just a textbook um, that I found. And what I'm gonna do before I meet with students um, is just pull a few problems. Now you can see here, trying to get these problems written on an interactive whiteboard might take me forever, but what I'm gonna do is I have a Mac. You probably, if you don't have a Mac, then you're probably gonna screenshot another way. But with a Mac, I am gonna hit Shift Command 5, and I get this cute little box. I love this box. Um, actually, ooh, let's hit Escape for a second. Before I do that, I'm actually gonna make it bigger. And the nice thing about this PDF is that um, the text stays really nice, even though I enlarged it. So I'm just making it a little bit bigger, that's all. Um, so you can see it's just a scotch bigger, but that makes it easier. And I'm even gonna keep the number 33 on there. I'm gonna capture it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go to my, oops, go to my bit paper. It's a blank paper, and I haven't just already dumped that on there. And I'm gonna just go to my desktop where my screenshots end up, and I'm gonna drag that onto the bit paper. Okay, and there it is, and I can make it bigger or smaller um, and have it ready for when I'm either teaching my whole class or teaching my students one-on-one. -on -one. And I would continue that with additional problems. This one's a little bit um, uh, blurry, but that's okay. So I would just preload the problems that I think I'm gonna need and I would for that lesson and I'm also going to, um, <laughs> I didn't erase this. I'm also gonna put any sort of like um, virtual, manip any kind of manipulatives I might need. So for example, for negative four plus three, I, in the past I would have had students use the two-sided counters. It's not six. Um, I would have used the two-sided counters, but now um, I'm going to use these shapes to represent the two-sided counters. So I would also front load any kind of virtual manipulative I might need. And these are really easy. Once you make one, you can just copy and paste it. So that's actually pretty simple. 
yeah, any kind of word problems. Again, so much easier than rewriting the word problems, typing them out. Just take a screenshot of them wherever they are. Um, and one thing I ha I've also been doing is putting formulas and things. Also screenshotted from the internet. I'm really not inventing the wheel. Uh, <laughs> The world's already a hot mess. I don't need to reinvent the wheel right now. So that would be a way that I would front load a lesson. Either if I was a classroom teacher and I knew what I was teaching ahead of time, or if I'm working with a student one-on-one -on -one and I know that we're working on um, point uh, slope intercept form in this case. Um, I happen to have shown a lot of middle school math, but I also do elementary math. It just middle school math kind of was on the brain. Um, so that's how I would prep. Then when I'm teaching, I would start with the Zoom window. So I'd go back to teaching. I would have everything in gallery mode, just like this. I'd say, hey, everybody, welcome. I would make sure to use the Zoom as a time to check in with students, have students you know, give thumbs up in the, in the gallery or uh, high fives or silent cheers. It's my favorite with little ones, just do a silent cheer. And um, just kind of get kids started checking in. I've been checking in a lot more than I have in the past because I think um, in the past I would find out how things are going on at home throughout the day and kind of be like, hey, how's that going? But now I think we need to be a lot more explicit about it as teachers. So that's just a random idea I have thrown in there as well. So after we get all settled in, then I would share the screen I would not share the URL. If I was teaching a whole class of kids, I would not share the URL to the bit paper because I do not want them to all be able to write on this all at once. It would be chaos. Instead, I would just share in Zoom, I would do the screen share in Zoom of my Google Chrome, okay? So it would look like this, and you can see here, this is what now my students can see with me in the corner. Okay, and now that my students can see me, I'm going to control this bit paper. Okay, I'm going to write on it and they can see that I can write on it, but they may not write on it. And this is how I'm going to do my lesson for a whole class. Now, there's two ways you can get engagement from your students if you have a whole class. The first one is to have them tell you what they might do. So you might have a student say, okay, I know that positive one and negative one makes zero. So that's a zero pair. This is a zero pair. This is a zero pair. And so all I have left over is negative one. So you see how I sort of modeled what a student might have said, okay? If you feel like your class is able to do it and you've set like a lot of boundaries around it, you can share to an individual student the, um, the bit paper URL in the chat. So what I would do is, it, you can, I have no one else on this call with me because that would be weird, but you would go to that st individual student and you would give them the URL to the chat, oops, or sorry, to the bit paper. And then that way they can do the bit paper too. So you would highlight the bit paper and send it to just that one student. Don't send it to everybody, send it to just that one student. And they could write on it too. So that what that would look like would be, so this is what I'm sharing with my class. And then way over there, another kid's bit paper, they would write maybe like equals, you can see there's a separate pen now, um, equals negative one, that's what's left over. So you would give your give one student control over it, okay? Uh, uh, and that is actually what I do when I work in, when I work with students now, I, I'll put it to you, what I do when I work with students one-on-one -on -one or in small groups is that I give them the URL to the bit paper in the chat, once again, just send it to them. And then we, we keep Zoom in the corner keep Zoom alive somewhere so we can still see each other, so we can still go back and say hi and see, see all that. But we will have that bit paper where we both have access to it, and then we're working through the problems together. So that's what I would do if I was working with students one-on-one, -on -one, 
or if you wanted to do like a conference with a small group of kids, you can give them all access to the bib paper. And then finally, after the session's over, after the lesson's over, you can also use a whiteboard. Again, doesn't have to be bit paper, but you can virtual use a virtual whiteboard to also set up notes and formulas for students and give them access to all the work you did together as either screenshots or you can make PDFs out of it. It depends on the whiteboard um, software, but you can also make all of this accessible in the same way you might make a PowerPoint slide accessible. So that is how I use bit paper and zoom together again doesn't have to be bit paper and zoom it could be any video conferencing software um, plus any kind of interactive whiteboard software together and that's how i've been teaching math a little bit more effectively it's still it's still a steep learning curve and i might have more tricks for you coming down the road but i hope that this has been helpful for right now as we all kind of take on this new teaching role. All right, I hope the best for you and I will see you soon.